Kahala Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rukak Radash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David reborn again in this generation. Inshallah Wam to the 130 Ashurala, who today are known as the Negro, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about this new church that has uh, popped up on the scenes and has been gaining a lot of followers um, lately that I just found out about. Now, before I get into this, the story and then me breaking down uh, who these, uh, what this church is, let's read the scripture. This is Matthews 24 and 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Hey, Korean Jesus. I don't know if you only cater to Korean Christians or if you even exist. No offense. Korean Jesus, I just really don't want to fuck this up. Sorry for swearing so much. The end? I don't really know how to end the prayer. The end? That video was the extent of what I knew about Korean Jesus. Now, that was until last week when I was exercising on a local bike path. You see, um, like I try to do weekly, um, I try to go for a run or a walk uh, on a bike path by my house. And on the way back, I passed by this uh, I'd say 20, early 20s, you know, uh, well-dressed, you know, button shirt, uh, back, big backpack, clean shaven, short hair, uh, Jude. And something was kind of, something that is a little off, especially on a, on a bike run path. You know, he wasn't there for exercises. He was obviously going home, which I now know he was going home from a, a church. Now, I, I, uh, he says good evening I say good evening back we pass each other maybe about five ten feet then he then I hear him call back and he's all excuse me sir he's all do you have a moment for me to talk to you about the Bible and me hearing this sure I decided I'd love to find out what this Judite uh, explanation of the Bible or the breakdown is maybe I could also share some things with him I thought well I go and pull out my phone because I knew I was gonna need need them and, and and mind you it's already dark it was about like eight o'clock you know the uh the nights are getting darker sooner and and uh well he starts talking to me and you know we start he starts going through and and ask and i didn't reveal at this time that that i'm a you know I'm, that i understand my my lineage of, of of an israelite nothing again i wanted to see what he had to say well, he starts break going into the Bible and he starts bringing up some crazy notions. He explains about how not only do you need the love of Father, the God the Father, but you also need love of God the Mother. And he was explain, just explaining how the, the God the Mother is all love and that ultimately that people don't know about her and this is the, one of the great deceptions. I stop him and I ask him, I was like, well, can you show me where in the scripture this is at? Because that doesn't say any of that in the Bible. And he says, sure. And then he brings up uh, Genesis 1 and uh, 27. I'm going to read it. He says, so God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Then he's all, that's it. And I'm like, what do you mean that's it? So I was like, that has nothing to do with a mother creator and stuff. And he said, he's all, well, when you think about it, he's all, God, who was a father, made the man and woman. Then, then that by definition means that there had to be a mother. And 
I looked at him with astonishment, like if he was for real. And he thought he like had given me an epiphany. He's all, you get it? I'm like, no, I don't get it. I was like, that has nothing to do with what that scripture means. And then I explained, I was like, there is no mother entity or, or deity along with the father. I was like, that's all paganism. I was like, that's the worship that goes all the way back to Samaramis and, and, and who was Ishtar, um, Diana and Mother Mary. I was like, and now you're calling her uh, God the mother. I was like, that's false. I was like, and then, and then I was like, but you know what? What else? And I asked him so, to, to tell me what else he wanted to me to, to learn and stuff and he you know moved on and he's all well he's all I also want to let you know that you know the only way that you're saved is through, through uh, you know um, performing the Passover and and I end up going on and and I asked him um, well what was the Passover and you know he kind of understood that it was that he understood that it was on Nisan the Hebrew calendar and that it was in spring so he had, he understood that how it how it aligned with the lunar calendar but for him, the Passover was simply what we refer to, well, what the church refers to as the communion, basically drinking the wine and and the physical uh, piece of bread, right? He didn't have the proper breakdown of that. So, and again, then I kind of go on, we can talk a little bit more, and I'm there explaining to him about, you know, at this point, I'm already explaining to him a lot more about the scripture than what he's trying to explain to me. But then I let him talk, I let him keep talking. And, I, and then he says, he reveals to me that the Messiah, who the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ, will be coming from South Korea. Now, this was one of the uh, biggest shocks I had. And I'm like, wait, what? What do you mean? He's at first I thought he had meant that he had came from South Korea, which I was thinking, I was like, well, maybe he's thinking he's coming from over in the Middle East. So maybe he's confused. But no, he literally says he's going to be coming from the place we know today as South Korea. And, and I tell him, I was like, where in the scripture does it say this? And, and then, and I told him like, I was like, that makes no sense at all. And then he tells me, he's all, well, he's all, it tells you this right there in Revelations 7 and 1. I'm sorry, 7 and 2. And he reads, and he actually read, you know, from 1 on, but I, then he, he pointed this part out. He says, and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God right but then then I was like and then when he told me this I just kind of started chuckling and I'm like no man I was like that isn't even uh, the, the Messiah that's an angel that the live that's doing the, the work of the Lord and I and then uh, then I kind of explained asked them I was like well what about the other other angels right and I, and I told him to read a little bit more and he couldn't he, he had no explanations for the rest of the scriptures and that's because he ultimately was indoctrinated with the script basically he was a parrot he had nothing to go through uh, that that you know in case he was ever uh, rebutted with things uh, he couldn't explain any of the, a, a lot of these things and then then I asked him I was like all right man I was like well what is God's name I asked him and he said Ung Sung Hung and at this point that was it I decided I'm gonna now take over this conversation and I'm gonna teach this guy what the heck's going on so I told him that was false and I pointed out that he was reading from a, a NIV Bible I had asked him if he understood who the Hebrews were and he said no he didn't know who the Hebrews were today and I explained to him that the, he, the true Hebrews today written about in the Bible are the Negro Latino native Indians and then he and I let him know I'm like you are a true Jew and he said well he's all and and, um, and and then he said and I and also that the Caucasians in the world that they were the Edomites who were foretold in the Bible that would run the world and, and run it into the ground basically and that the Koreans were the, the 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 children of Moab and stuff, and then and then I asked him, I was like, do you even know who Moab or Emin is? And he had no idea. He'd never heard of those names before, meaning that he had never read the Bible for himself. And this is also uh, fairly uh, 
fairly evident because his Bible was crispy as heck. Brand new, you know, NIV Bible, which I pointed out to him that the NIV Bible that he has is the wrong Bible, that it not only uh, has changed out scriptures, but that uh, that the publisher of the NIV Bible is the same company that publishes the Satanic Bible, right? And then in, in me doing this, we were going through some scriptures. One of the scriptures that we went through was Numbers 118 that talks about how the Israelites declared the house, uh, their, uh, their, their pedigrees by the house of their father. And the NIV, it says, by, they declared their house by their pet, by their uh, clan, which is totally different. Because the point being is he was saying that he had uh, uh, different people in his family, different races in his family. And I told him it didn't matter because ultimately it was his father. Now, we go through and I start explaining how, you know, we would, you know, us Israelites and we would go to invaded videos, we would forget our history and everything. And we were going, jumping to scriptures. I explained to him that, that the Lord could not be coming from uh, South Korea because, um, because it tells you that he's going to be coming back in the clouds when, when I, I had said that if those clouds are UFOs, he scoffed at it. He started laughing. I'm like, really, you think that's funny, but you think, uh, the Lord's coming from South Korea, that's not funny. And explain that if he was to come from South Korea and then would die and then, or, and then, you know, then come back from the, from the, uh, um, come back from the sky, that would mean he would come three times. You know, that that would be his third coming, right? And he even understood that that wasn't right. But, you know, at the end of all this, you know, he, he felt that I was still wrong, even though he had said, he's like, look, man, he's like, you, you really understand the Bible. I can tell you've been learning this for a three, studying this for a long time. He's like, but you just, he's like, you don't have the truth. And he told this to me, right? Even though he couldn't quote any scriptures, I, exp I was explaining to him the history of how things happened, but I was still wrong, right? So I explained to him at that point, I, I basically lost my patience with him and I told him, look, man. I was like, I was like you, what is the RFID mark, uh, or what is the uh, uh, mark of the beast? And he had no idea. He's never heard of it either. And stuff like that, as far as what it is in this world. He knew that it would be a mark that everybody would, would have to take in the end of the world, but he had no idea what it was now and stuff. And then, then, um, and then he, he, and then I told him, I was, I was like, look, man, I was like, this is your warning. I was like, I gotta go, but look you're following the you're following religion you're following the wrong people and this is where i where i cut in and i asked him about where his where are his, his teachers from and he says well i learned from the bible and i said well who is teaching you the bible and he said well they live they're from south korea and i said how convenient that the lord is going to be coming again from the same place that your teachers are from and then i told him like look man if you can't get this if you can't get the, the coincidence between that and what you're what you're teaching, I was like, then this truth isn't for you, and that you're gonna and you're gonna be judged, and I'm just gonna warn you right now that if God's name is not Unsung Hung, the RFID that the mark of the beast is the RFID chip that's being pushed out, and he he knew about the the chip implants because of the news and everything, and I told him uh, that that he was a true Jew, and I gave him a little. A uh, piece of paper handout that I tend to always carry with me for little encounters like this and uh, and you know we basically parted our ways you know now let's let me uh, read this this is Matthews 24 and 5 for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many now you see besides all the other signs that we're seeing right now with the Rumors of wars, the, um, the economies uh, in trouble, people rioting, kingdoms fighting against kingdoms and all this stuff. You're seeing people saying that they are Christ. Namely, the people that this Judite had been indoctrinated by. Well, I had gone home and I started to research this unsung hung. I wanted to see what this was about. Because I remember I seen a lot of Korean Christian, you know, churches around, you see them all over the place. And you also, you know, you, 
you see that 121 Jump Street uh, uh, clip, which is I thought was funny, right? So, but this is what I found. I just want to point out that these aren't pictures of them. These are paintings of pictures of them. These are my own paintings, which I made. So here's my signature. So one reason I'm bringing this up is because these people, because of how big they've grown the church and how much money they've made, they're, they've got, they go crazy with the trademark and copyright claims. But again, these are my images and anybody who wants them, you are free to use them. You know, these are paintings of these people. There was this man who was born in 1918 and he's now basically pushing up daisies now. Uh, he died in 1985 and his name was Unsung Hung. And he was a seven day, Seventh Day Adventist who eventually was excommunicated from Seventh Day Advent, uh, uh, Adventist because of he had gone off on his teachings. He started teaching the wrong things according to that. And he would go through and it was basically for the most part your standard protestant christian now this man here he never called himself christ but he did call himself uh elijah the prophet coming back hence uh fulfilling that one prophecy about elijah coming before the great day and we both know that wasn't this is not him that was abba bivens who uh who uh, came back to start the uh, One West School, or the teachings which the One West Schools picked up, uh, which also fulfilled prophecy and and, can, and would go on to awaken the uh, Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians. Now this man here basically was just teaching Christianity and, uh, and going through that. Now he eventually had an adulterous relationship with a woman who had come to the church with her husband who she later then separated from to marry the, the pastor, the head of the church, Um Tsung Hung, and her name is uh, Chung Gil Ja, or Ja, yeah, now, she's referred to as Heavenly Mother. She's some 74-year-old um, woman. Now, that woman, after uh, the Um Tsung Hung died, there was this man in the, in the church, Ju Kachol Kim. Now he is, he's now known as General Pastor Ju Chul Kim. And he's basically the, the, the businessman behind this whole prosperity uh, Christianity uh, movement. Now, he does, he's the one who basically turned this woman into the cult of personality and started saying that she is the god the mother and that Hong Sung Hung was the uh, Messiah who came and of course he grew this church to large proportions as it is known today and they have thousands upon thousands of followers worldwide now right now they're making a big push in the states namely on college campuses and just as Jehovah Witnesses and many other of these fringe religions do, they target single mothers. Now, let's go and read a little bit about the uh, World Mission Society Church of God. It says, The World Mission Society Church of God is a new religious movement that began in South Korea in 1964 after founder Aung Sung Hung died in 1985. Right, because after the small church was created, uh, that businessman Ju Cho Kim he actually started a bigger church with the new doctrine that they now preach today about God the Father and God the Mother, and that that and they say and they these are the these are this church here is so blatantly false with its teachings that it they use terms like you know this is the truth. How can it not be a lie? Or, you know, or if you start asking questions, they basically say, oh, we'll be revealed later on and all stuff. They've gone through and done other crazy things like they they uh, they baptize people in the name of Unsung Hung, right? So let's continue reading this real quick and I'll get into some more of the crazy stuff they're into. The church expanded its activities to other parts of the world beginning 
uh, began to use the new World Mission Society Church of God. Its headquarters are located in Vangdong, Sog, Sognam City in Guaji Province. The church believes in Christ Aung San Hung and God the Mother, Jangil Pja, as God and that it is restoring the truth of the early church. And that's a bunch of bullshit because ultimately these people are are uh, Moabites, right? It tells you in the Bible uh, about it tells you this in Psalm 60 and 8. Now this was King David after uh, going through. He would sing. He was singing about all of the uh, nations that were underneath him, and he said this about Moab. He said, "Moab is my washpot." Over Edom, I will cast out my shoe. Philistia, triumph, though thou because of me. Now Moab is ultimately a, are, is the servants of the Israelites. So these Koreans ultimately are are basically loose servants of the Negro Latino Native Indians. Now, one thing I wanted to go ahead and read this is because of that God the mother because this uh, lady right unsung or that lady she like I said she originally came to the church with her original husband and here's that guy unsung hung and this was the church in the beginning and ultimately she left her husband for this man right so this is this is what happened now that man like I said he died, and on his tombstone, it says Elijah. The, it says the prophet Elijah. So even this man didn't even, uh, uh, you know, the doctrine of, that's being te- taught now is is different than than what this man even taught. Now that woman who is now taken over, uh, and has been turned into a cult of personality. Right? There's videos of her showing her kindness, feeding people, right? It says the love of a mother who gives without condition, right? You know, she ultimately is the uh, the image of, uh, of this church and the businessman sits in the background. But let's read this. This is Revelations 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So he did not say that there's going to be a woman in his tabernacle. This woman here is an antichrist, and she's ultimately a Moabite, man. She is a heathen who's out there trying to fool the masses. Now, it'd be fine if she was just fooling her people, but there's a... Israelites, Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, who are falling for this. There's a big movement in Mexico, and uh, and that and that's uh, and also here in the states that's starting to, to start up. Most of a lot of these South Korean churches you're seeing um, have to do with with this belief. Now, let's read this. This is Colossians two and eight. We were at least any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the t- traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after the Messiah General Pastor Ju Chul Kim is one of these antichrists who are who are uh, spoiling people through his deception and his doctrine of devils now along with his uh, with this church he bring he publishes many books using his own uh, church's uh, publishing company, right? Right, God the Father and God the Mother by Kim Joo Chu. Now this is the stuff that gets pushed out to all these people uh, who are falling for this man, right? Here's another popular book. This is the actual book that they read from now, and it basically just tries to say that the Koreans and Korea, South Korea, were yeah, it was the original Holy Land. And ultimately, this guy is just making tons and tons of, of, of lies up uh, to try to um, 
justify it, right? You know? Now, some of the teachings that they go through, like I was saying, is, is they say that the Lord is going to come back from South Korea. Now, let's go and read how the Messiah will return. This is explained by the angels who, uh, who address the, uh, the disciples when the Lord was taken up um, into the cloud and, and out, you know, away from earth. This is Acts 1 and 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So you see, the Lord is not going to be coming from South Korea and then die and then and go back, man. You know, see, these people are, uh, are dependent on their followers not going into the Bible. They ultimately explain obscure verses in ways where it benefits them and it doesn't line up with anything else of the Bible, right? They are simply using the, the Bible like most of these Christians and Catholics do and just pacing, uh, paying it, uh, you know, a homage by, by holding it in their hands or reading one or two scriptures here, but totally um, destroying the, the meaning of it, man. Now, one other thing, like I said, that they do is they baptize people in the name of Unsung Hung, right? And there's many videos if you go online, you can, you can look up the uh, uh, testimonies about the World Mission Society Church and, and how they trick people uh, uh, into uh, getting baptized in that name and that they don't reveal to anybody the name of God until after you get baptized. When you're baptized, they'll actually say the name, you know, I now baptize you in the name of Unsung Hung. And a lot of people were, were, were pissed off about that. But let's go ahead and read this, what the Lord told us we should baptize in. It says, Matthew 28 and 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You see, also baptizing, baptizing isn't a water submersion in dirty, salty ass water, man. Water, the baptism, which you're supposed to be baptized to be saved is the truth of the Bible is the words of the scripture being told to you in the proper manner right telling you the who are the Israelites what is the name of God what is the name of the Messiah what is the RFID chip you know what is going on in the world for the most part that's the truth of the Bible right not that Jesus Christ is going to come from South Korea that there's a mother God that's that uh, that you also need the love of and all that devils of doctrine man it tells you here Matthew 3 and 11 I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost understanding and with fire which is the words of the Bible right so the God so the Messiah Yahweh Shai is going to give us understanding of and the words of, of, of the Bible, man, in the proper context. And that's why today, the Hebrew Israelites today, the Negroes and the Native Indians have the truth of the Bible. That's why we can't be um, confounded with, with these scriptures. Now, we're, we're making these Christians go out and having to do their study, right? And when we come across doctrine like this, the uh, that, that this church pushes, it's easy to shut down because... What they speak of is, is is basically rubbish, man. It's a bunch of, uh, of feel-good, prosperity doctrine that makes no sense. You know, any real Christians uh, who have actually read the Bible know what they're saying is a lie. But again, these people here are, are usually, um, as Apostle Gaffar said, man, they're slow of heart, right? They're slow of heart. Look that up, man. Find out what that means. Let's go ahead and read the last few scriptures here. This is uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared 
with a hot iron, right? So you see these people here, that guy that was trying, you know, hopefully he'll wake up, but I doubt it because he seemed fairly adamant, even though he couldn't explain nothing that he was trying to, uh, trying to push. And even though he, he admitted that, that I was telling the truth and I, I knew my stuff, he still thought I was telling a lie. So this guy, that Israelite, was his mind was seared with with the hot iron of this false doctrine taught by this church. Now this church isn't ultimately going to get away. This is ultimately what's going to happen to uh, Ung Sung Hung, even though he's rotting in his grave. He's already getting judgment right now. I'm sure uh, it's going to happen to God the Mother, that uh, that lady uh, Chan Gil Ja, and ultimately that that businessman devil Ju Chao Kim right this is this is for you guys this is Revelations 22 and 18 for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book so you devils out there man you uh world mission society church of god you guys are an antichrist you're it's a heresy what you're teaching it's blasphemy you will pay dearly for deceiving uh Israelites even though a lot of them are meant to be deceived and to be destroyed but for you to do this and to make mockery of the of the Bible and to use our book to to sell your goods to make money you shall be destroyed when the Lord comes back and more likely Lord will before that with when these riots start breaking out may North Korea come down and destroy you guys May there be a missile that lands right in, in your guys' headquarters, man. So, with all that, I want to go and give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakhok, Radash, the bonus to my teachers, the apostles, and the elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, and Shalom.